Bradford. Okay, so this boot camp was all about money and money management, um, and I am still going to touch on those things. But obviously, you know, given the fact that we have got this COVID nineteen, which, by the way, I don't know if you all saw my post, but somebody posted that you can say COVID nineteen to the theme of "Come on, Eileen," and now I can't make it stop. So, if there is a little bit of rhythm every time I say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't, I cannot get that shit out of my head now. Um, I feel like it has to be addressed. We have to talk about it. And I actually feel like it falls into money management because the reality of owning your own business, I mean, obviously something like this, you know, it was not expected particularly. Um, it wasn't super fast. You know, there was, there were signs and everything, but I think that for most of us, we just kind of had absolutely no idea of what something like this might or could look like. Um, but as business owners, it's important that we're still protecting, um, everything that we work for. And to me, like I said, that falls into money management because this is our businesses. For some of us, this is our livelihoods. Um, for some of my gals that have been in this business for a long time, you know, this is income that you depend on, but also too, for my gals that are brand new, I mean, bless you guys. We've had like 20 new team members in the last like month. <laughs> and I'm, you guys are probably all just like the fuck. So I just want to, oh, and I'm sorry, I do swear. Um, so as a warning, if you need headphones, Louie, has got her headphones in, she knows. Um, so if you have littles and you need me to like nix it, just post like, Lucy, stop swearing, um, in the, in the comments and I'll, I'll try. Um, that's all I can promise. So, um, so I wanted to talk about this and I wanted to talk about how you um, protect your businesses, but then also potentially kind of moving forward, um, talking about the money management to make sure that in, in any situation for the majority, right? Like obviously if, I'll, I'll to be honest with you, one of the things that made me really aware is that we had warning with this one. It made me think of, you know, I'm Pacific Northwest. So it made me think of the big ass earthquake of which we will have, you know, I don't know, a minute warning if we're lucky like that is not time to go to costco um so barring an enormous catastrophe i do think that there are things that we can do to pivot i think it's pretty cool that our um corporate office is super on point so i wanted to talk to you guys about the um corporate office real quick and um <clears throat> so at this moment they are running on all cylinders they are good to go um, they have implemented things inside the office to keep everybody safe. Um, all of our corporate staff for the majority also has the availability and the option of um, distance working so they can work from homes, they can do it uh, digitally. So, um, so our corporate office is looking really good. Our warehouse is looking really good. They're doing fine. Um, so at this point, it's business as usual. We've stockpiled products. So we're, we're good on that front. And I know that that's something that a couple huh. of the gals have been um, asking me about. So on that front, we're totally good. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about how to pivot your businesses um, to make sure that you're still making money because there's still money to be made. I think that this is the most important part, you guys. Number one, um, you know, moms some moms like I don't know because we're all from different locations like Washington schools are closed until like May basically April 24th that's May <laughs> so I mean they're gonna be at home for the most part with the babies that like it's it's summer fucking break all over again like I feel like some of us haven't recovered from summer break like your moms need you right and then if they're not going out like the concerts that are canceling the casinos that are shut shutting down the sporting events that have been canceled women and people are social and so i think having social outlets is still going to be really important so one of the things that i wanted to remind you is that social distancing does not have to mean social isolation right it's just people being aware of where they're going with whom they're with so to me if I have to choose between going to Fred Meyer again or getting six of my close friends together whom I know and trust, it's gonna be my six friends. So I do wanna tell you guys, parties are still going strong. The board members have been posting about it. Um, they are still doing parties. They are still booking in-home parties. So I would, if you are wanting to, I would still make those available. Um, now I do also know that for some of you, um, you have maybe family members or women or men or kids in your household that are immunocompromised that are at really high risk. If you are choosing to not take that risk, that is your choice. Um, but please know that 
barring that, there's no reason why you guys can't be doing in-home parties. Sarah just busted out a thousand dollar party. Um, my party the same night was 12 women was $3,000 party. Like you guys, people are still partying. Um, they are still getting together. Women are still going to get their nails done. People are still going to small settings. So I do just want you to know in-home parties are still good and well, um, but I do think that it is also going to depend on where you live and as things happen. Um, so kind of just stay tuned in and plugged in. And I do think that you need to be ready to shift your businesses pretty quickly. So I wanted to talk about a couple things um, in, in particular. Um, number one, you guys need to protect your business and protect your brand. Now I am not, y'all that know me know I'm not a germaphobe. Like I'll lick, I'll lick a garage floor. Like I don't, I don't care. These things don't occur to me. I don't think about it. Um, so I tend to talk about, you know, oh my God, all these people are panicking. This is so stupid, blah, blah, blah. If you guys check the top leaders in pure romance, you'll notice we're not posting things like that. Um, we are not posting opinions about other people. We are not posting opinions about the coronavirus. I'm not saying y'all can't have them because I got plenty of opinions for days on all sorts of things. Um, here's what I would not do. I would not post about them um, because if you're posting about, oh my gosh, this is so stupid, people are panicking and this is dumb. And then somebody else is posting that it's stupid and it's dumb and somebody else, and then you know your post gets seen next, but you have a mom who has a kid that's immunocompromised or lived with her, lives with her dad that's immunocompromised and everybody keeps telling her that she shouldn't be worried, you've just isolated somebody. So when you think social media, right, because we are exposed to so many different people, we have so many different friends, you are potentially isolating a lot of potential customers, potential virtual hostesses, like potential business down the line. People get butt hurt, you guys, and people take things really personally, even though it's a general statement. If someone sees it, um, it, it hurts. Um, I, we had, um, the experience, one of the things um, that went down in Costco and everyone's posting about it right now. Like, you know, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Like, don't be this asshole. And they're posting the picture of the carts. Um, I was in line at Costco and um, my husband went to go help somebody else out. And there was a woman with a whole bunch of shit in her cart. Like it looks stockpiled and she is getting her ass ringed by some random person being greedy he like it was everybody else was really cool um here's the deal <laughs> she had a list and she finally showed it to him and it was really clear that she was shopping for other people so it turns out her she lives in an apartment complex her neighbor is elderly her downstairs neighbor is elderly her mom is elderly um her um uncle, I think it was her uncle, was like undergoing chemotherapy. Um, and then she had somebody else in her immediate circle that was um, at high risk of actually contracting the disease. Like they worked in, I think one of the senior care homes that had confirmed cases. And so she was like, you should not be going to Costco because your ass might have it. So she's doing these things for other people and to protect other people. And she's getting her ass reamed. So I would actually be careful about even the don't be greedy posts because even in our attempt at niceness, it's still causing meanness. So I feel like you just need to be cognizant of the fact that you and your opinions are representative now of your brand and of pure romance, as but especially of your business. So just be cognizant of it. Now, some of the memes, you guys, like, I'm sorry that the TP memes are going to be funny all fucking day. Like... <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, go to town with the TP memes. Um, you know, some of the other, like, um, like I obviously thought that the come on Eileen COVID-19 was funny. So I posted that one. Um, so I do think that we can get away with the memes. Here's what I'm going to ask you though, is that, and again, not worried about it, not panic inducing, not stressed. Anything you post, I want you to ask yourself if this turned out three months from now, people are quarantined, we're like Italy, you know, worst case scenario, and then some, would I be embarrassed if that popped up? Okay, because if the answer is yes, do not post it. Okay, um, to me, that's the easiest way to go, because we have no idea how this is going to play out. So I just think that when in doubt, don't do it. Um, 
like, and find somewhere that you can. Like if you've got opinions about it and you know some of your friends have the same opinions, message them. Like if you see a super funny meme that you're like, okay, this is, this is too far, but it's funny post it to your friend that you know is going to appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like share it with them, but it does not need to be on your personal Facebook page, which is what you use to wrap your business. Um, <clears throat> I also think it's important that you don't ignore it. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. Going backwards for the love of God, do not make any fucking medical claims of any kind. Um, I went live on destination success. You guys have actually been really good. Um, like our toy cleanser, I said in the desk, unless y'all got a Petri dish of Corona and you've been spritzing the freaking Corona or the cleansing mist on it and y'all were able to check that shit because you're some fancy ass biological scientist, epidemiologist, CDC employee um, that moonlights at the World Health Organization. Like don't, don't. Um, because again, worst case scenario, you don't know. Um, and imagine, because you guys, here's the thing we work for pure romance. So not only have we always had that working against us in terms of the whole social specter, um, could you imagine if somebody got a case and they, they said, I thought I was good because I used the pure romance toy cleaner. That shit would spread like fucking wildfire. We would get annihilated. And here's the issue. Not only would we get annihilated for that, but then even though it wasn't proven to kill COVID-19, people would be like, well, maybe that doesn't even, maybe it doesn't even clean anything. Maybe it doesn't clean my toys. Maybe pure romance products are crap. Like things spiral out of control. So you cannot make any claims at all about our products. Do not affiliate them at all with COVID-19 with the exception of marketing hand lotions and like repair balm to people who are washing their hands. Like we carry a really good lotion and you're getting dry hands. Y'all need some, whatever. If you need a coupon code on a big ass bottle, a, you know, you could even, I would be okay with you saying like a COVID-19 bottle size bottle, sorry, of, you know, hand lotion. I got you. Um, but do not affiliate our products, you guys with this. And like I said, I think you should be distancing yourself from this in terms of those things. I would also not be posting any other sort of medical claims, like how many people are impacted, what kills it. Like there's one going around right now that if, if the COVID-19 virus is in your throat and you gargle with salt water, it'll kill it. And I'm like, well, theoretically vinegar kills it. But again, like we, here was what I said, we have not been marketing vinegar and cleansing mist to kill HIV, which has been around for how long and is a virus. Why would we do it with COVID? Like it just doesn't make any sense. You guys just don't even go there. Okay. Um, so now that I've told you all of the ways that you shouldn't be talking about it, I do think it's really important that you address it with your hostesses and with your party guests. You need to address it with them before they address it with you. Because if you address it first, you look like the professional and you look like you're on top of the ball and you've been thinking about it. Whereas if you don't address it quickly enough, I know some girls are afraid to address it because they're like, oh, but you know what, if she cancels because I address it. And I'm like, babe, if you don't address it with everything going on, chances are she's going to cancel it. If you address it in the right way, she's not going to cancel because of it. She's going to feel better about it. So you need to relieve her anxiety and let her know that you're on the ball. So when it comes to in-home parties, you need to be messaging your hostesses saying, Hey girl, in case you missed it, there's a virus. <laughs> like, um, you can put a little winky face or something like that. Obviously she didn't miss it. And you can say, I'm so excited for your party because social distancing does not mean social isolation. And I know that we all need this stress relief right now. And I cannot wait to make your friends laugh and for you all to have fun together. If your parties are this month, I would also add in something like, especially if this potentially gets worse, right? Cause you're saying, if you're going to do it, do it now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, and then let her know, I have safeguards in place to help protect you and your guests as best we can, just in case that was one of your concerns. If it's not, and you're like, hell yeah, let's party hard, 
awesome. But if you are nervous about it, I just want to address any of your concerns. Please just know I got you and we're going to have a great time. You're not saying cancel. You're not saying we shouldn't do this. You could even say, we're totally good to go for your party since it's only events, you know, with more than 200 or 250 people that are being banned. Thank goodness for us. We're only looking at like 10. Um, this is going to be awesome, right? So address it with your hostesses. I am also letting her know that I will be bringing hand sanitizer. I will be bringing wipes. And if necessary, I will change the way that I do my party. I'm not telling her how. Um, cause you guys, my party on Friday night could not have cared less. Like they did not care at all, but I have also seen on the board page that women are doing parties where people absolutely do care. So I do think that this is going to be situational. So I am not telling her all of the preparations that I'm taking. Um, I'm just letting her know that, you know, I will take precautions. All right. Um, and then also too, moving forward, you guys be prepared and tuned in, right? Just stay on top of the actual real news in terms of what is being suggested and what isn't. So um, at the parties, <coughs> excuse me, um, you need to have hand sanitizer on your table, okay? You need to have Clorox wipes either in your bag or kind of on the table. Um, I had them ready to go. Now my party Friday night, again, did not care less. Everybody just kind of washed their hands. I hand sanitized real quick. We called it a day. Like they legit just thought this whole thing was stupid. Um, and again, I'm not going to distance them by sharing my opinion. Um, but you bet your ass that I hand sanitized and I did things to protect myself. So that's another thing you guys is that you want to make sure if you need to be like, I have a, I have a mom who has a mast cell disorder it, you know, I've got a sister that's undergone chemo and she has a five month old baby. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to catch this bullshit. <laughs> so, um, so I was hand sanitizing discreetly every couple items. Um, and here's the thing you guys, for us, I am six feet away from my guests. So we good. <laughs> like you keep your distance from your guests. You can hand sanitize, but I am having hand sanitizer. I am leaving that out. Um, I am going to have wipes for products because I want you to walk in your party prepared for women that do want to make sure that they are safe as well. Um, and I've seen some posts on the board page, like Monique McGuire. I don't know if you guys know her. She's a hell of a germaphobe. Um, always has been. She always hand sanitizes between every single product, no matter what, like was doing it. Bitch. She brings a, she brings her own air purifier to parties and always has like, so I'm like, oh, I'm still not going that extreme, but you can discreetly be pumping hand sanitizer in between your products. We all know it doesn't take much. Um, I will be passing the hand sanitizer around at the beginning of the party. So everyone can hand sanitize at the beginning. And then if you want to leave it out on the table for your guests, you can. That way they can hand sanitize between products if they would like to. Um, theoretically speaking, unless they are sneezing, coughing, or touching their mouth, and getting saliva on their fingers, they don't need to hand sanitize between every single product. But if you wanna have it accessible for them, you can so they're comfortable. You can also wipe down our products when you get there. Here's the deal, you guys can wipe down your products at home. They're not catching anything on the way to the party, but I do think that it makes people feel better if they just see you do it real quick. Like you don't have to wait till they're sitting, but as people are coming in, as you know, you're getting set up, if you just have a wipe and you just wipe your products down real quick, there's just something there that says I'm professional and I care about you guys. Okay. So I think that that's important. Um, the only change that I am really making to my actual demos, I am not having them lick their fingers and re-wet the water-based lubricants. Okay. Um, because you know, at that, at that point I was like, okay, that is saliva. I don't know. I, you got, I'm not a specialty in disease control, but I'm like, I feel like that they're licking something that then they're touching things with afterwards. And it was funny until this virus, I'd never really thought about it. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's kind of gross in general, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> cause they touch the products afterwards. I was like, no, they don't touch the water-based lube. And then I was like, oh wait, they touch the next one that I pass around. <laughs> so I am not having them lick their fingers. Um, however, 
when I'm doing the edibles, I am asking them. So if they still want to lick their own arm that is not coming in contact with anything else, I am fine with that. And then you can pass out a wipe when you're done with the edible products. Okay. So I'm still letting them taste. I'm still letting them touch. Um, I know some gals are putting things on popsicle sticks. Again, I have not gone that extreme. You certainly can if you want to. The other thing is that you can limit the amount of items that you're actually passing around. So if basic instinct, as an example, you can rub it on them. Flirt perfume, you can give them a spritz real quick down the shirt. I don't pass Coochie. Um, I don't pass the aftershave. I don't pass the Kiss Body Mist anyway. Body do. I already spray it on their arms. So you can go ahead and spray it on their arms. Um, if you're doing things like, um, you know, the great head or the cream lubricant, what I would do is I would talk about each one and then you can actually just give them a squirt and a squirt. So they have a little bit of each one, then they can do their rub, their rub, their lick, their lick, and then you can pass out the hand sanitizer. So it's kind of isolated, right? Like, so I just think that being aware of things like that can be helpful. Um, but again, if you guys are at a party where they don't care, roll with it, like, unless you're worried. So I just want you to kind of think about how you might do your parties um, because I want you to be prepared. Um, it would be me that would walk into a party with no hand sanitizer, no Lysol wipes, have somebody be like, when's the last time you cleaned these? I'd be like, I don't know, like a week and a half ago. Like, oh shit. Like, right. And I'm totally freaking freaked out that I was not prepared at all and basically disrespectful to the women at my party. So I just want you to be prepared for that um, so that you're not seen as someone that doesn't care. Um, for the, uh, the other thing I'm actually doing um, is I am having them or I am signing for them on my phone because phones are disgusting. <laughs> Hands are disgusting. So that was one thing that I did at my party where we took like no precautions. I hand sanitized ahead of time and I signed for them on my phone. That way I didn't have all of their finger germs where I put my face. Okay, so I'm signing for them on Square. I am asking for their permission though. I go, hey, do you mind if I just scribble for you real quick? Every single person that goes, that's cool. So I'm doing that one. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, basically just kind of follow general guidelines, you guys. Um, Monique, my, my little germaphobe, she is going straight into her laundry room and changing her clothes and then showering after every single party. So if you feel the need to give yourself a little extra butt boost, it can live on clothes, right? They have said that. So if you've been around people and you want to go home and change your clothes, you can do that. So um, I'm like, why are you sucking on sweatshirts? Like, I don't understand, but, <laughs> but it's fine. So, um, okay. Get that out of the way. Yes. As a side note, I always keep baby wipes in my kit because people don't like having the sensations be sticky on their arm. So yeah. I always just be like, Hey, if you start feeling like you're feeling kind of sticky and you want something, just let me know. Yeah. So baby wipes are a good thing to keep for that. Don't yeah. go buy them all out. I know. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I think that that's the thing is that, like I said, I am Monique McGuire is on this spectrum of germaphobe and I am on this spectrum of germaphobe. I'm like, oh, if it's sticky, lick that shit off. Like, you fine. Like, <laughs> I, like, so I'm so, I don't have baby wipes. I don't have sticks. Like, bosom buddy, legit. I'm like, just rub your finger <laughs> on it and put it on your face. Like, and nobody ever cares at my parties because I think I don't care. Um, but I, you know what I mean? So there's, there's the extremes, but I think that with this, just find a little bit of balance. Um, okay. Before I move on away from this kind of portion of like how to do, do any of you guys have any questions about how to go about doing your in-home? Oh, I'm sorry. I also meant to um, add when you are addressing it with your hostesses, um, I would address it with your guests. I will be working on a um, picture for you guys. I saw one. I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, I will be working on a picture for you guys to post um, in your Facebook event so that you're addressing it with your guests as well. Um, that way it's just something you can put up in your event and be like, hey guys, we're still on. Again, I am loving the, the 
catchphrase of social distancing does not mean social isolation. We're going to have so much fun. We're still on. This is going to be awesome. Um, but I am also posting in my events. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, <laughs> but, uh, but Facebook has gone ahead and added that COVID-19 warning to our event pages. So I was like, well, shit. <laughs> um, so that's part of why I think it's important to address it in your Facebook events is because they are getting told <laughs> to help you make decisions about large events. But also I am grateful that they said large events. So I think letting them know, like even posting a picture of that or saying, whew, did you get the COVID-19 warning on this event? Good thing we're not a large event. Can't wait to see everybody. We're still on post the little picture with some of the precautions for your guests, okay? Um, does anybody have any questions? Questions, thoughts, concerns about the party? No? Yes? No? Okay, so I have had uh, party, parties cancel because of this, yep. because the guests are and I pretty much say, okay, I, I totally understand. You know, we can reschedule it because um, they the guests aren't going to come at all. They okay. even said that. So what would you – so my thing is I told them, okay, I understand. We can um, do this when – things are calming down when people are feeling more comfortable. That is how I approached it, Lucy. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about that. Um, so my next portion will be avoiding cancellations and what to do next. Okay. Um, so no questions about what we've done so far, because Anna, that's a really good question. Okay. So then, um, so here's the deal, you guys. Um, when it comes to maintaining your parties, getting your parties to hold, like I said, you need to incorporate it into your hostess coaching so that they don't bring it up first. Because when they do come to you and say, hey, my friends are nervous about this virus, they're not attending, there is very little that you can say to recover that. However, it is actually really important to me and it will be important to your business and to your bottom line that you, you push back a tiny bit you are going to have to be careful how you do this, right? It's just kind of like um, if somebody cancel, cancels for a semi-serious or legitimate reason in our businesses anyway, um, we can say, okay, I totally understand, but we can also offer reassurance. Um, and so I think it is important that you do that. And again, I'm not panicked. I'm not nervous about it. But you guys, like, if this has been in Italy since what? Like January, Feb, yeah. You, so when are we rescheduling for? July? Do you know what I mean? Like, I know that some gals are rescheduling for April, but I'm like, oh, I mean, okay, you know, fingers crossed, those parties are going to hold. But I feel like if you're rescheduling in-home parties for, you know, the beginning of April, you guys, what are the chances that that's, you know what I mean? We're going to go, they're not happening. All right. Like, let's, to me, I don't think that's panic. I think that's just being real. Is that, you know, if they're worried now, I don't see how it's going to be significantly improved in two weeks. I really don't. Um, so I think it is important that you try at least to keep any current in-home parties that are on your books, on your books for right now. Um, and I think that's where saying something like, oh my gosh, I totally understand that. Um, I get it. Have you personally spoken to each guest? Because I think it's going to be really important with all of the event cancellations, with, um, you know, large event cancellations, concert cancellations, women not congregating in usual social places, that these gals have an outlet to have a little bit of fun because shit's about to get more stressful. What if you reached out to them and let them know that I will not pass products, because you already know that these women are concerned about it. I will not pass products. I will have hand sanitizer on hand. If they want to sit three feet away from each other, they can, but that social isolation or social distancing does not have to be social isolation. Um, we're going to take precautions at the parties, but also too, I feel like you guys are all friends. You trust each other to not 
come if you're sick. Wouldn't you rather get together now than try to get together in a month from now when who knows? So I, I do think that it is worth a tiny bit of pushback by letting her know what you're going to do and asking her to actually reach out to each individual person. Um, because to me, I would rather still have an in-home party with five people, um, you know, than nothing at all. So I, so I am still trying to keep my in-home parties on the books, but I do think that that's where addressing those concerns ahead of time will help you stay ahead of the curve. So you're not reactive when they're trying to cancel. Um, and then the other shift, I, I'll be honest with you guys, I am currently not rescheduling in-home parties because I have no idea and I'm not going to keep wasting my time filling up dates for parties that may or may not hold and then trying to boost and encourage attendance for April parties when they're dealing with all this bullshit when I could focus on doing virtual parties. Okay. So I am transitioning over if they will not do in home or if they are canceling, I go, Oh babe, listen, I'm about to sound like an airline, but I'm not accepting COVID-19 cancellations. I put a smiley face and then immediately afterwards you say, since we already have that date set aside for you and your girlfriends, I want to still give you the best possible experience. Totally understand how you're feeling. We will transition the party then to online and we will do it via Zoom. I will post the instructions in the event page, heart. Did y'all notice I didn't ask? <laughs> okay. Here's why. If she already had that party on the books, she already had that party on the books. So this is the gal that's like, no, Lucy, like we absolutely have to cancel this. Okay. And she will not do it. Then I am saying, okay, hey, babes, I'm actually not accepting cancellations, you know, winky face, but here's what we're going to do. We'll transition it since you're worried and your friends are worried. We will transition this to an online virtual party. Everybody's still going to be able to see each other's faces. You guys are going to be able to talk to each other. You're still going to be able to make all the jokes about all the products, but obviously you'll be in your own home. You could even have like one friend over to watch it with you. We will do it during the same event time and date. So nothing will change. I'll post the link and the information about how we go virtual. Because here's worst case scenario. So she ghosts you or she doesn't do it, or she says no, which she probably won't. To me, it's worth it. Um, because I feel like you already had that date set aside for her, you guys. You still need to protect your business. Like, she was prepared two weeks ago to have you in her house, and she can't do a one-hour Zoom with you at that time. And okay, other worst case scenario, bitch doesn't show up. Who cares? It's not her house. <laughs> like, you know, just, just being honest. So, um, if you don't want to say you don't accept cancellations, that's fine, you guys, but you can say no problem. We'll transition to a zoom party or to a virtual party. I am using zoom because we all know you guys, like we do them. This is so much more interactive than a Facebook live. So, um, I know when it comes to Zoom, here's some things that you guys do need to know that you may not know because you've never hosted or you don't use it. Um, if you have more than three people on the free Zoom plan, you will get cut off at 40 minutes. Like it'll shut down, okay? Um, how, that being said, you can hop right back on. So if you wanted to make it like a built-in break, <laughs> you can do that. Um, to be fair, to be honest though, I would try to have it done within 40 minutes if you want to stick with the Zoom plan, with the basic free Zoom plan. Um, if you do not want to deal with that, if you're like me and you're like, there is no, like, I can't even tell these women my name in 45 minutes. <laughs> this is not happening. Um, it is uh, $14.99 a month. And you can cancel it. And I think that this is where, for me, that was important for you guys to understand is that you don't have to pay $200 or whatever for a year. You can pay $14.99 for next month and then see where we're at. And then if you need to do it again, keep it for another month. 
So to me, is $30 worth two months of being able to offer online parties? Abso-fucking-lutely. Okay, so to be honest with you, I would pay for it. Bonus, it's a tax expense, it's tax deductible. Um, but I do think that this is more fun. The other thing that I would do, um, and actually I was um, needing to do it, I'm gonna do it right now so I don't forget. Um, if you guys are, and I'll post this, um, I would post a actual screenshot of, um, Uh, there we go, of the Zoom window so that they can see what Zoom looks like. Um, and you can show them where the chat window is. You can show them, you know, all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, that way, again, they can interact. And that way, you know where the mute button is. You know where the stop video is. Uh, you guys spend a little time like if you haven't spent a ton of time playing with this take the opportunity of our zoom calls to see how you can mute people um or you know like so i would get it set up and then the other thing too is if you want to do a zoom meeting with one of each other as the host that way because i don't know like do you guys have the buttons that say like manage participants and invite and polls okay so then what i would do is as soon as you have invite, okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming you guys don't have record. No. Oh yeah, we do. Oh, you do. Okay. Oh, oh, that's right. We established yeah. that though. When oh, you click good. it, you can't actually record it though. <laughs> okay. So it's it's stupid. Um, if you guys hover over the picture of people, can do you have the option of muting or unmuting other people? No, you okay. have to be the host for that. Okay, um, so I have the option of muting. I have the option of unmuting. I can actually shut your video off. I can also like rename you. So Jordan is now, what up lady? <laughs> so I wanted to share that rename with you guys though, because can you guys rename yourselves easily or no? Okay, no, yes? Yes, you can. Okay, Sarah, you have to hover how over your own picture. Okay. So if you hover over your own picture, I'm assuming it's the three little dots. Yep. Okay. You guys, there's our icebreaker game. Put your porn name. I love it. Yeah, like you guys can still have so much fun with this. So whether it's the like, I'm Juicy Lucy or Lush is like, you've got to come up with a name that starts with the, you know, come up with a sexy name or, you know, there's all of those different, like, what's your porn name what? things. That is you. <laughs> what up? <laughs> um, that is, you know, that's your new fun game. So I love that. Uh, yeah, delicious Darlene. Like you guys, it's freaking fun. It's fun. So I love that you guys can still do that. Um, you can also um, make people hostesses. You can make them co-hostesses. I can also, let's see, I can spotlight the video. Um, I don't know if that changes it for, did that change anything for anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, it did? Yeah, I had mine so I could see everybody's windows and now it's just on me with you guys at the top. Yep. Okay. So good. So that is the um, spotlight video. Um, you can now go back to gallery view if you want to. But what I did was I hovered over Sarah. So you can also hover over yourself while you are doing the party. If you want to, you can highlight yourself. Um, or like what I'll probably do is if I'm about to say something really important, like, um, you know, if I want to highlight an item, like I'll probably use the spotlight video when I talk about the V39, <laughs> the lubes, cleaner, and toy mist. And then maybe I'll pick one other product like the firming cream. Because how fun is it, you guys, if I'm going, all right, guys, this next product I'm about to share with y'all is freaking epic. So it's important that y'all listen. Listen. <laughs> right? Like it's fun and it allows them to... Um, it allows them to kind of like, oh, like it allows you to put emphasis on it. It also changes up the vibe and it changes up the scene. Um, question, when I cancel the spotlight video, did it go back to the gallery view for you guys? 
or not no. automatically. Okay. So then when you stop doing the cancel or the, when you cancel, when I cancel the spotlight view up in the top right corner, you should be able to click gallery view. If you click gallery view, it'll go back to everybody being this way. So you can get, okay, I'm done being in the spotlight. Y'all go ahead and go up to the top right corner and click gallery view so that you can all still see each other. And they may not want to, they may want to keep you spotlighted the entire video, but they can still see people up at the top. They can still interact in the chat. So I just wanted to share those couple little tips and tricks with you guys on how you can still make this a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more fun. Um, you can also play games in the, um, like porn or polish. You guys can still play like, all right, guys, we're going to, we're going to do this real quick. So y'all, we're going to play a game. We're halfway through. Ooh, I feel like we need to like shake it out a little bit, take a little break. We are going to play the dirty alphabet game. So all of you need to make sure you have your chat windows pulled up. I'm going to give you a minute, get your chat windows pulled up, get your typing fingers ready. You guys, we're going to do this for real. Get your typing fingers ready. I am going to say and show a letter of the alphabet. You are going to type the first dirty, sexy, sensual, kinky word that comes to mind when it comes to that letter. The person that has the most, I'm going to check the chat at the end, um, the person that has the most is going to win. All right. So if some of y'all are fast typers, y'all are about to win. Okay. Ready? Steady? Letter D. Oh, Angie, nice job. Nice job. All right. Next letter. L. Lick. Oh, Val. Oh my God. Val beat her by like two seconds. Whew. Okay. Letter S. Ooh, Jordan. Jordan had it. Oh, Anna, you got it too. Angie. Oh my God. You guys went boom, 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 boom. Ooh, this is competitive. Okay. Who had P? Letter P. All right. You guys see how that works? Did your adrenaline go up a little bit? A little bit? Like it's still fun, right? Now I could unmute everybody. Um, how do I do that? I know that there's a way of doing that. Unmute. And I'm going to go, okay, guys, I'm going to unmute you all. Here is the, um, here's the potential problem with unmuting everybody um, is that you might get backgrounds that are really loud. So if you want to try to play this with them yelling, you absolutely can. Um, oh my God, Amber's bald bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys can try doing this, especially if it's a smaller group, right? Like if you have six people or whatever on here and you can see that they're all in their offices by themselves. Um, but also too, you do have to be cognizant because they're in their own homes. They might have kids running around. It may not be appropriate if they are on speaker and if they do not have headphones in to be hearing everyone yelling penis and sex and the F word and the C word. So that is something that I do want you to kind of be cognizant of. That's another thing that's going to be important for Zoom calls is tell them like, okay, guys, be party ready. Have a post in your event that tells them to wear headphones. Like y'all, things are about to get real and we talk in sexual health. So if you've got a six-year-old running around, got, have headphones, babes. And then if you can see that everybody has headphones in, or you can ask like, okay, guys, does anyone have kids in close proximity? And if they all say no, then play the game, right? Be like, okay, cool. Give me a warning in the chat window if kids show up. So you're just kind of being cognizant of the fact that if you've got six different women, you're dealing with six different environments. But I really do think that you can still have fun with this. Now, here's another thing that I am going to try. I have not done this yet, but I am going to do it. Um, yeah, it is. I know it looks so good. <laughs> um, that's another thing you guys, when people chat in the chat window, address it and bring it into your parties. If you have to wait until you've done your product demo, that's fine, but come back to the chat. Cause this is what makes people feel like you're interacting. Right. Um, I am going to test, um, like I'm going to call them survival packages. Cause I think that that's funny. 
like hashtag not too real. I'm not going to call them COVID survival packages, but I am going to call them like maybe sanity survival packages. Don't kill your spouse. Yeah. yeah, there you go. I love that. Don't, yeah, don't kill it. Don't, don't kill anybody. Survival package. Um, I am going to be, I, I haven't done them yet because I am just now ordering the product. So again, you guys, I am kind of be preparing for this to be a minute because um, I feel like that's how I should roll as a leader and, you know, as a, somebody that depends on this income a hundred percent. So I ordered a whole bunch of the travel size products and my events when they're virtual typically are up five to six days. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be setting up my events either on Saturday or on Sunday, um, or I'm sorry, five or six days ahead of time, um, based on when they want to do the party. Um, and I'm doing that because the very, very first day I am going to offer these travel size kits to people. It's going to be, I haven't done all the math. I think it's going to be $15 based on what's in there. Um, including shipping. Um, no, it's not. It's going to be, yeah, 15 bucks. Um, do not let this cost you a ton of money. It is going to cost me the shipping. Um, I'm okay with that. But what I'm doing is I'm sending them as many little sample sizes as I possibly can and foil packets. So like I'm doing a foil packet of just like me, let me pull up my order. So I'm telling you guys exactly. Um, I'm doing a foil packet of just like me. I'm doing a foil packet, I believe of, oh, um, I'm doing a foil packet of whipped. Uh, da, 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 da. And then I'm also doing some of the actual travel sizes. Um, okay. So the, oh, I did a travel size of afterglow. So that's 250. I'm going to pull up my little calculator here. So I'm doing a travel size of Afterglow, and then I am doing a travel size of Basic Instinct. Um, I am doing a travel size of Body Boost. I am doing a travel size of Coco Glow. I am doing a, where's the other one? Oh, shut up right now. Um, you guys, we can order the Sexy Skin Collection, so I'm pretty sure that that's actually cheaper. That was not up there before. Sidebar. So that has the two Just Like Me's. Um, but yeah, and then like a travel size of, you know, the Just Like Me, which is also 250 And then I'm doing a foil packet of O and a foil packet of Sensations um, and a foil packet of Capri Dream. So they're pretty much getting, I mean, uh, okay. They're pretty much getting like, I think these are costing me about 20 bucks, but I'm collecting $15. So if you want to limit that so that it's not costing you any money, that's totally fine. These do need to be shipped depending on where the party is relatively quickly, right? Cause it's going to take three to four days, depending on where they live. Sometimes two for first class mail. These are not shipping priority. Like unless they want to pay $7 shipping to get it tomorrow, then I will give them that option. Um, but you want them to ideally have it either the day of the party or the day after the party. So they can still have it to touch and taste and feel. Right. So it still kind of gives them that experience. And you can even tell them, like, if you don't want to open it until the party and find out about what it is and have it like in front of you and be ready, you can totally do that. So it's kind of fun because guess what? If they have it in front of them and I'm telling them, even if you open it, if you bought the travel pack, have it with you in front of you while we're doing this. Y'all can still do this with the Just Like Me. You guys can still have them lick the whipped. You guys can still have them rub, blow, lick sensations. Um, and I am giving one to my hostess. Um, it is important. I am, I am priority mailing the one to my hostess. And here's why. If she's getting sensations and I'm telling her ahead of time, I want you to try this in front of everybody and keep it positive. If you don't like something, keep that shit to yourself. Don't lie, <laughs> but don't say that you hate it. But I want to, I want all of her guests when she's trying to sensations going, Oh my God. 
oh my God, you guys, this is so hot. This is so freaking cool. You need to try this. I want her to taste it. If, you know, if other people don't all have it and be like, you guys, this shit tastes like cake. This is bomb.com. So I'm going to be utilizing my hostess. So hopefully other gals buy the packages. They have them there as well. Um, but ideally, at least my hostess has it so they can see her interacting with the products. All right. Um, the basic instinct. I'm like, okay, guys, go ahead. Like roll it on, roll it on. It's going to make you feel real nice. Um, you know, you could ask who's going to be my shimmer queen and, you know, have them show it. Um, you can even post in the event page, like, okay, ladies, if you've gotten your travel size um, of your, you know, set, if you are willing to have a Coco Glow tattoo, I want you to take a Q-tip and do a heart in Coco Glow before you put it on anywhere else on your arm for me. Apply it today and then go right over the top of it tomorrow. And then during the live, be like, all right, who is my Coco Glow? Glow? Coco Glow Girl. And they're like, it was me. You guys look at it. Look at how cool that is. Right. So I feel like it's a really good way of getting interaction. Um, yeah, Sarah, you could add the Blooms on Noir because then theoretically, if they're getting the Afterglow, they're getting Coochie, they're getting Capri Dream, and they're getting Blooms on Noir, they have every single one of our scents to try. So you guys can certainly do that. So I think that, I think that that'll work really good. Um, also, during the Zoom, um, or during the, sorry, during the live, um, I am, oh my God, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm exhausted. I did five one-on-ones yesterday. And my brain is still not fully recovered. Um, in the event for the virtual party, I am posting a picture of the wish lists. Okay. I am posting a picture of the party exclusives and I am telling them that if they want to, I would print it out so that you can have it, bring it to the party. So that's also gonna be in my prep checklist. If you want it, print out your wish list. Oh, if you guys are mailing virtual party packs, mail them their wish list too. Put that in there. Mail them the wish list and mail them the party exclusives. If they're not, still have one in the event page. Because again, like they can sit here and they can write it down. And I can be like, all right guys, who has hearts on their wish list? Let's see it. Like, I just think that everything that we do at a real party, if you can incorporate those things, your parties, I think my virtual parties are still going to be really on point. Yes, Amber, did you have a question, babes, or are you coughing? Okay. Um, just making sure. So sometimes you make the same face. <laughs> um, so I am still offering party exclusives. I am still doing the wish lists. I am still doing all of the same things that get me, um, you know, sales. I am still doing VIP. Now the difference is for VIP, I am going to shout them out in the Facebook events. Okay. And I am telling them if for some reason you absolutely don't want to get shouted out by name, please just let me know. I'm still going to shout you out, but I won't choose your name. All right. So I think it's still important that you're doing the gold level VIP and you're still doing the pink level VIP. Like I'm still offering exactly the same things that make my sales crazy high at my parties in my virtual events. Cause I keep coming back to the fact you guys that I had that like $11,000 online party. Like this can be legit, but I do think that we have to do all of the things that make our party successful anyway. Um, I am also going to be playing a booking game. Um, on my envelopes or whatever, I'm only going to have one of each color and I'm going to put a big fat number on them. So it'll be like, okay, guys, I am only offering four virtual parties. And when our hostess gets three of them, so we don't even have to fill them, I am going to give her, I am going to drop probably to $100 in free products until I know how these parties are going to go. Um, but I'm going to offer her $100 in free products when those three virtual parties hold. In order to claim your gift, you guys got to be quick, quick fingers. Like what number do you want? And so I'm still playing my booking game. Okay. So I'm still doing it like Sarah just did the one with the cute ties. You can still be wearing the tie the entire party and then hold them up and have tie one, two, and three. If you're doing cute little shamrocks on a stick or whatever, you guys can still do those. So I would still continue to play your booking games. Um, and then absolutely, Sarah, like you just said, this is kind of cool because then ladies that are not in the area are still going to be able to come, which is pretty cool. Like 
they can invite their cousin from North Carolina now. Like, I think it's, I think it's potentially going to be really neat. Um, and I think that this could also change the way that we do online parties moving forward and potentially move away from Facebook Live ever and keep doing them like this. Like, to be honest, the first, I, as soon as it like was like, oh my God, why haven't we been doing them by a Zoom? But I think that I was afraid of getting women, you know, into the technology. But I think that as long as you are, like, in fairness to you guys, I just say get on fucking Zoom. <laughs> Like, I never shared a screenshot of the Zoom screen going, here's how you can mute yourself. Here's how you can do whatever. I probably should. Um, so I would do a post like that in your event page. So I will um, post in the boot camp um, a couple of these things that, you know, we've got coming up. Um, also, Ashley Joe does fairly successful online parties as well. It's been on our calendar for at least a month now. She is going to be coming up on Thursday. Um, and we are going to hammer out an online party script. And then obviously with this going on, we will make sure that it is Zoom friendly. Um, and so we will get that out to you guys. It just will not be until Thursday. So if you just want to wing it, go to town. Um, but also I feel like if you're booking online parties, you can be booking them, you know, for, you know, for next week, like for that week of conference. Also, for that week of conference, we have that extra hostess incentive, right? That one that was from March 25th to March 28th, where they get that deluxe glow kit for free. So as part of my hostess incentive, um, I am offering that, right, for virtual parties, not necessarily for in-home. That is another transition that I am making in my business right now is that when, because I need, I need to book parties. I needed to book parties three weeks ago. <laughs> so I need to do a really big blast out to all of my customers. I don't think it's worth the touch to that many people trying to book in home parties. Because I think that as a general population, we have a lot of women that are not wanting to do it. And so if I'm going to message 200 people about a party, I feel like out of those 200, there is not as many willing to do an in-home, right? So I'm actually focusing my intents and my efforts on booking a shit ton more virtual parties. I'm still going to try to keep some in-home. I'm still going to try to keep those rolling. But at the end of the day, I got to make money. Like this is how I feed my family. Like this is how I buy the toilet paper. So, um, I am transitioning that. So my blast, um, you can still do if the, you didn't do the like you won post or message to all of your people, you can still do that one. So like Andy, I did a random drawing of all of my customers and you won. Woohoo! All you've got to do is invite eight ladies to a virtual fun or uh, like to a fun virtual ladies night. And I know that all of y'all could use that right now. Are you in? Like you're getting blah, de, blah, de, blah in free products or do you know what I'm saying? So you guys can still do this for virtual parties. Um, I also had one that I really liked that I saw and it was like, Amber, question mark. Since our world conference was canceled, well, Pure Romance is giving all hostesses with a $250 party this package for free. And she sends a picture between March 25th and 28th. I'll make your event page. You add eight girls every half an hour. So Facebook doesn't think it's a scam. LOL. I'll show products, videos, and games, and you'll have your own party code. Just stay active and comment on my posts. Door prizes too. It's that easy. Want to do it? So, I mean, it's quick and it's easy and it's a little blurb. And so I kind of liked that. Um, but yeah, my intention and my focus will be Zoom parties. Here's the other thing. You guys, I'm not doing ordering via Zoom. Okay. Um, I will be following up with them after the party to take their orders. So it is really important that you are on top of your follow-up. But what that also means, my goal is to do my Zoom parties within like an hour and a half. I think most people can do them within an hour. So what that means though, is that y'all could do parties at five, at 6.30 and at eight. You do three parties in a night. And then you do all of your follow-up with all of the people the next day. Also, teachers are not going to work right now. Teachers are usually friends with more teachers. So if y'all are at home, you guys could be doing a Tuesday at 1.30. Right? Like, it's kind of opened up our schedule. So don't hesitate to, uh, yeah, Micah's like, yeah, I mean, she's in that position, right? So like, Micah, if I were you, I'd be hitting up all my teacher peeps 
and I'd be doing a happy hump day. <laughs> yep. So you know what I mean? Like find out who are your teachers because they need some fun right now. You guys, that is stressful. They are like, like I said, they're out of work. Like I, you know, I mean, I feel like reach out to them, offer them, offer them comedic relief. At the moment, my school district is being paid, but a lot of IAs and the people who work in the cafeterias and stuff, we don't know if we're going to be paid. Yeah. I luck out because I'm a fed position that I will be forced to work from home, but not everybody will be. Yeah. And once they clean the school, which they're doing for the next two weeks, they're shutting the school down. So that means nobody's stepping foot into it. Yeah. And that's happening statewide. That's yeah. not, it's not like as much as we joke about it, it's, yeah. I mean, local restaurants are closing and are, their doors are closed. Yeah. That means they're regular employees who don't cook. They're not making any money. This is yeah. scary as hell for the people, even, you know, as much as we joke about it, yeah. but there really isn't like tonight. Right now is the time to be like, Hey, I know you've been on the fence. Got a little free time guys. Jump on it. I yeah. think humor is the way a lot of people are dealing with it. I yeah. don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. 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 Nobody wants to come to the dentist anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let alone while we're all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yep. one of the cleanest places, but, but who wants, you know, no, thanks. Yeah. I am not that going to a dentist office with those nasty ass aerosols floating around there from those fucking drills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Love you, but not doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Love you, Sarah, but I don't need you in my face, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so here's the thing you guys is that we can also offer this as comedic relief. And then also too, like Micah just brought up a good point, but here's the thing is that these women may not be getting paid. Okay. So I will be shifting, which is huge. You guys know that this is huge for me. I will be showing a smitten toy during my virtual parties and I will be showing one Bentley. Okay. And here's why I do not want any woman at any of my parties to feel like they can't get something awesome because they might be out of work for six fucking weeks. Okay. So I'm still showing my best of the best. So if they've got savings account, they've got, you know, money coming in still, if they're not worried about it, then I want them to buy all of the things, but I do want to make sure, and I'm not making a big deal out of, of it at my parties. I'm literally just like, and guys, listen, let's be real here. If y'all are balling on a budget, I still got you. Like you could use this five times a day. It's going to cost you less than 25 cents an orgasm. And I'm going to really quickly just show smitten because I don't want them to feel like they can't still enjoy and have fun and treat themselves a little bit. But I also know that some of these women are single moms, three kids. They can't go to work because they can't get childcare. Like the fuck is she going to do? <laughs> so I do think that it's important. That's another thing is that this is her opportunity to get some free stuff. So when your host is coaching, right? If she's like, girl, like I don't have any money to spend. Be like, I don't want you to spend any money. I want you to earn all the free things. So we're talking about the hostess rewards. We're talking about earning free products. And that's why too, with her, if she has friends all over the country, like obviously too, we've been fairly hard hit here versus maybe like Arizona or some of these other places. I'm like, girl, you got friends in Arizona. You got friends here, there, wherever, like Adam. And this is a hell of an opportunity, like hell of a recruiting opportunity. 110%. Like, are you at home and need to be making money online? Like I said, I mean, I feel like you guys could do a shit ton of virtual parties. And also I will say I am still offering Friday and Saturday nights. I do not ever offer those for virtual, for online parties. Um, but I figure that's when women have available anyway, they can grab their cocktail and we can make it feel like a Friday night. All right. So I'm still doing that. Um, the other thing that I have, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it in any of our recognition videos. I do have a backdrop. Um, so they do not see this shit show when I am doing my, my zooms. So it's gold sequins. I think it was like 15 bucks on Amazon. It'll probably be the only thing still in stock. <laughs> um, so I have it behind me and it's cute and it's pretty and it's sparkly and it's fun. Um, you do not have to have one of those, right? But it is something that kind of looks nice. Um, the other thing that you can do too, when you're thinking about where to do your Zoom parties, like Michelle right now is up against a wall, which actually works really well because it's a plain background. So you do want to make sure that you're square on. So if you set up a chair or something, but you guys can be sitting like on something comfortable 
with your back against a wall and then you can put like a pure romance sign or like our team mission statement or your goal trackers or a gold star or a pure romance hat heart like in that space so you don't have to have a backdrop to make a place in your office or in your house that's you know slightly more professional to do a party um all right let me see if there was anything else um yeah so sarah just mentioned you can have a hundred people in a zoom call like you guys can have a lot of people on here. Also, if you wanted to, you could record it and share the recording with the group, but that is completely up to you. Um, I probably won't um, because I do wanna encourage people to be on live, right? To me, that's the difference between like an online live and doing this is that you really have to attend this. So it still creates some of the FOMO. Um, you can also theme them like best jammies, like everybody wear your jammies. If you're doing the 8 p.m. on a Friday, you know, make it, make it cute. Like, you know, best quarantine jammies or something like, I don't know. I do think that we can still have fun with this. Um, like best hunker down outfit. You guys could do um, like make it a fresh faced, um, you know, challenge, like no makeup, whoever wears no makeup to this live, you know, gets a raffle ticket or you could do it. I don't know, like, um, it's an eyebrow raising party. Best brows wins a prize. Like you guys could do all sorts of dumb shit. Cutest slippers, um, best mug, like, uh, what else? Bring a drink. Like if you, get, no, don't do that one. I was about to be like, whoever drinks Coronas get five raffle tickets. Like, <laughs> like I think that and I think that that's the other thing too, you guys, is that if women are in a setting where they see that you're taking this seriously, I do think that you can get away with more. Do you know what I mean? Like I would not be posting, like I, you guys, I've been all, I've, I've had memes for days and I've had like marketing ideas for days on the fucking Corona, like bucket of Corona, like let's have a Corona, like buy margaritas, we rock in Corona, or even like see a Corona, we have in margaritas, like, you know, for days. But the problem is I can't blast that to the public. That's the issue is that yes, you might book three parties, but you had 700 other people that saw it and had a problem. Whereas if you're booking a party with someone virtually because of Corona, I feel like you can have a little bit more fun with it when you're not putting anybody at risk, you're not challenging anything and it's a smaller group, right? So I do think that you guys can have some fun with it. Um, so yeah, you can still offer themes. Um, like I said, my parties are gonna be about five or six days. So day one is gonna be like getting the guests added. It's gonna be me posting um, about buying a, um, a travel pack. Cause like I said, I really need to get those shipped out by the next day. So I'm making it really clear. Like today is the only day to get your pack to have it guaranteed by the party date. So I'm really focused on that. Um, day two is going to be like memes. It's going to be fun. Um, it's going to be um, about letting them know that this party, even though it is online, is live. So it's kind of not hardcore logistics, but let, letting them know like this party is at 6 p.m. on Friday via a video conferencing like, um, or via video chat, like not Facebook live. So you do want to set, you know, put this date in your calendar. Um, that's another really nice thing right now is because people aren't going out, you guys, you can book these parties still a week out. You don't have to book these three weeks out. They're not going to concerts on Friday nights. They're not go. do you know what I mean? So you have a, like, you can do these next week if you want to. Um, day, and then also I'm posting, like I said, kind of fun memes. Um, I might make, we'll see if I have time. Um, if you guys have time, do it. I will probably make maybe like five or six um, little short product videos. Um, maybe things like Like a Virgin, um, things like um, maybe Coco Glow, um, things like the um, Keely shower gel, um, repair balm, um, you know, that type of thing that I don't necessarily need to like between the sheets, things that I don't necessarily need to like show. Um, and I'll probably be posting a couple of those video clips because I feel like, again, my parties are long. I need to shorten the Zoom a bit. So if I can demo a couple of products and, and 
kind of blast them into the event. And then also too, it's a, it's a spoiler. They get to see me, they get to see how fun I am. So it's going to make them want to be on the party. Like y'all thought my freaking between the sheets demo is funny. Wait until you see main attraction. Um, you can also post pictures of, um, things like the main attraction, just the box and be like, I can't wait to show you what's in my box. You know, make sure you're on the video on Friday at six. So do some sort of like product teasers leading up to the event. And then of course also fun memes. Um, day three, I ask my hostess to go live to share her favorite products and to talk about how excited she is about the party. Day four, same thing, fun memes. I typically do my party on either probably, it'll probably be day five because of the mailing situation because I wanna do those travel packs. So my party will be day five. Um, I don't think that that's too long because they are getting invited on day one. So I think that that's all right. Um, so day four is still gonna be, you know, fun stuff. Tomorrow, can't wait, blah, 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 hype them up. Um, you also wanna make sure that you're having those engagement posts so that people are kind of seeing them. Um, and then day five is going to be the party details. So like, make sure for tonight you have your headphones, you have, you know, your travel kit, um, you know, have it there with you, um, print out your wish list, like super excited. Like that's the day that I'm going to be posting the logistics and then also how to hop onto zoom. You could even make a really short, like one minute video on how to use Zoom and post that. Um, and then that, you know, and then I'm, and then I'm doing the party. So the next day then is kind of day six. Um, that is when I am following up with everybody. Um, that is when I am reaching out to everyone. One thing that I would also probably implement, and I need to write that down, is that uh, give them raffle tickets for adding you as a friend. Give them raffle tickets for sending you a private message. Um, and I would say like, send me a private message with, you know, with which, um, or with your hostess's name and your favorite emoji. Because obviously, you guys, your Facebook stuff, your Facebook messaging is about to go through the roof to strangers if they are friends and if they message you first. That eliminates a lot of um, Facebook's red flags in terms of sending you to Facebook jail. It typically sends you to jail if you have, if you're not friends, but also if you are always messaging them first. Because it feels like then it's not a two-sided conversation. In that instance, yep. would, would you make like a joke about like, hey, I know a lot of us are stuck at home, but I don't want to be stuck in Facebook jail too. So yes. I fucking love that. A hundred percent. Yeah, I love that. And then I think that brings it back to like, I'm not doing this to be annoying and spamming you. I'm trying to do this so that you, you know what I mean? So we can actually do this. I think that's super right. legit. Bye, Micah. Um, no, I think that that's super legit. I like that a lot. Um, and then you can also do it for like, if you buy the travel pack, you also get, you know, two ra a, a raffle ticket or something like you guys can do raffle tickets for whatever you want, but I do think focus it on getting them to message you and getting them to send you a friend request. So you're also working on that, you know, throughout the couple of days. Um, and then I would give them raffle tickets for hopping on live. And then you can still do the same thing at your party. If you absolutely love something, share it in the chat and share, you know, if you have time, if you have a second, share what you love the most about it and I'll hook you up with a raffle ticket. So instead of doing the raffle drawing live at my party from the women that are at my parties, I'm going to do it the next morning. So all of, all of the raffle tickets from the lead up, from the adding, from the party are all going to go into one big tub. So like a 
Facebook Live with the drawing. Yep. Yep. And then I like that I can go on live and be like, oh my gosh, you guys, good morning. Whew, morning after. Like, luckily it wasn't awkward. We didn't have a coyote ugly moment. <laughs> I'm so excited to do the raffle. Like, thank you all so much for being there. I'm really excited about so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so that booked their own parties. Can't wait to get that set up with you. And I will be reaching out to everyone today to collect your orders. Um, we wanna wrap this up as quickly as we possibly can. So let's do our live drawing. You know what I mean? You can do all the things. Um, and then you can also, um, you know, offer, you know, remind them about the VIP program, you know, do all that kind of thing. So I think a live the next morning is smart. Um, if you don't do the live, that's totally fine. Like you can just post a winner. Like you don't have to go crazy with this, um, but you can just post a winner. Here's my philosophy though, is if my in-home parties are not holding, by the time I drive to my party, I set up, I do my party and I drive home, I'm looking at four to five hours. So if I'm doing an online event in my home that takes me an hour, hour and a half to do the Zoom, I'm cool with doing a 15 minute live. Like I'm actually okay with giving this woman portions of my time because to me it is going to be a lot more effective. Um, okay, so the connection card, that was a really good question. Val, so I am not doing a connect card. Um, thank you for bringing that up because I completely spaced that. You guys want to use Google Forms. Okay. So I would let them know that they, I would offer fuck, five raffle tickets, three raffle tickets to fill out the Google form. And I would maybe say something like, ladies, if you do not fill this out, you cannot join the party. Now, am I enforcing that? Absolutely not. Um, but I feel like you could say it because of the 18 years of age thing. So you're like, this is my age verification form. I still have to protect my business. So I do need everybody to fill this out. I'm gonna put you guys in all in a raffle, but I can't, we can't have you on the Zoom if you're not willing to fill it out. Awesome question, Val. Um, and then two, that's part of your follow-up list. The cool thing too with Zoom is that you know who's on here. So one thing that I would do is I would ask every single person like, hey guys, here's what I need. We're gonna play a fun little icebreaker game. But before we do that, I need you to post your name, your real first and last name in the chat for me so that I can get you into the raffle. You guys can actually, when you're the moderator of a Zoom, you guys can actually save the Zoom. Um, so then you know who to follow up with and who is on the zoom. And then the sponsoring game, Sarah, I feel like you could still just play that eight questions or the ask me anything. I guess not the eight questions, but you could play ask me anything. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And if it's crickets, do what you usually do or have the eight questions with you and be like, okay, since y'all don't have questions, I got questions for me. Like, <laughs> Do it that way. Um, and then I think too, if you guys are talking about recruiting, being really honest about like right now, I'm really grateful that I can make cash money online. If you guys need something, you know, a little bit of side hustle to make a little bit of extra cash, like I got you. So I think talking about the recruiting opportunity is really important. Um, and then I think also long-term talking about how having a business that we can transition like this is really cool. So um, okay, let me see if there was anything else. So then the sixth day, like I said, you're messaging these women, you're checking in with them. Um, it is really important. I think that you have a close date to the party. Um, I still offer payment plans. I still offer whatever, but I need to have their orders by whatever night. So usually two days after the party is kind of my cutoff. Um, I, I tell them it's the night after the party, but I always extend it one more day. Um, you need to reach out to these women as quickly as you possibly can because they forget very fast what they did and didn't like. That's also important why they get the wish lists in their hands or why they see it because you need visual triggers for them to remember what they liked. Um, so to be honest with you, I will probably do parties at like 5.30 and then at 7 and then follow up with everyone that night. So it's going to be a late night, but I usually don't get home from my parties until 11 o'clock anyway. So do that original follow-up then. Um, you can still do parties on Saturday night. You can do them on Sunday afternoon. Like I said, you guys can do these whenever the hell works for you. But I was like, I could do a lot of parties. Like a lot. 
So that's why for me, I'm going to focus on promoting virtual bookings because I want to try to get as many as I possibly can, especially if they're in and out in a week. So, yeah. Um, okay. Any questions? Okay. So I think Lucy, I actually, I think it, the zoom is a game changer mm -hmm. than on doing it live on your Facebook. I think it's way better. And Can I oh, there you are. Sorry, it froze. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that this is awesome. Um, okay, now I do want to talk money management really fast. I'll be quick, I promise, um, because it was important to me that I shared a couple tips on this. Oh, am I still I fucking you frozen? Missed, you missed a question from oh, Jordan. What was the, what was that? Sorry, yes, I did. Says, I have a girl that wanted to do an online party. I've been making picks for her Facebook event. Should I offer to do a Zoom party? I would. Yeah, I would. Um, and I will be setting these up, you guys, in groups. Um, that's how, because I've always had way better luck in groups than I do in Facebook events in terms of people like engaging. Um, so I will be doing them in groups, but you can try either way. I mean, I feel like with Facebook, I, it just is what it is. So you can try Facebook events and you can try Zoom or you can try groups. It's totally up to you. And then that's where I'm posting everything about this. So you're still posting all of the things that you would take typically post more for an online party. It's just that instead of going live, yeah, you're doing Zoom. So I feel like why not, right? Um, because I think the thing is, is that originally when we talked about online parties, we really talked about online parties as being time savers. Um, something to do in addition to in-home parties. That's why we talked about, you know, doing video clips and doing that kind of thing. That way you could schedule 10 online parties to run at once, have them go to your website. And you didn't have to do anything because these leaders were still doing four parties a week and wanted to have a life, right? So I think that that's where this differs somewhat from the the goal of online parties before the goal of online parties before was to supplement an income and give you something that you could really easily do while still increasing your in-home business. The primary difference being now we know that the reality is our in-home business will probably decrease somewhat. So to me, we can increase our number of time that we are actually spending doing the online stuff. So, um, okay. So I want to talk money. Um, I want to talk money partially because I think that that is part of the reason why it is so important, um, especially with things like this. Um, there are a lot of people that are shitting their pants because they have got no savings, no extra cash, no nothing. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys are setting yourselves up for success somewhat. Um, so I'm just going to give you two really quick tips about um, money management. Um, number one, if you guys have direct deposit, if you earn bonus checks, your bonus checks should be getting direct deposited straight into a savings account. And I would suggest it be one that you do not have online access. Well, maybe now it's not a good idea to say that. Make it one that is not easy for you to just transfer money out of. Okay. Um, the reason for that being that you want to make sure that you are earning what you need to be earning with your parties. Do not depend on your bonus check because that changes. Also, one of the things that happens with a lot of people and a lot of leaders is that as their bonus checks grow, they really gradually increase their spending, which means they actually don't notice the increase in pay. But a lot of you have goals like a house or a car, like those are big money goals, which means that if you're slowly increasing the quality of your life, all of a sudden you've got a two and a half thousand dollar bonus check and you still don't have a savings account for your house <laughs> because you increased your eyelash extensions and going out to eat. And, you know, maybe you bought something else that you're, you know, making payments on. Like, whereas if that money immediately, like that's where you guys are all in a really good position because you're not getting super big bonus checks yet. Um, 
get it going into that direct deposit right now or into that account right now so that you don't miss it. If you have an emergency, it's there. If you need it, it's there. If you're like, screw it, my kid deserves a little shopping spree before school, you can choose to go in there and spend it. But you're not making those little shifts that you don't notice. So when I did the math on this, um, if I would have banked my bonus checks from the time that I sponsored my first consultant, are you guys ready? I would have over half a million dollars in the bank. Uh, nobody ever told me to do this and I wish that they had because guess who gradually elevated their lifestyle while forgetting to put money in the bank. <laughs> so I do not, it's not that it's a mistake. I love my life. I'm grateful for my life, but would I have preferred to have half a million dollars in the bank? Fuck yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you guys, I could go buy cash for a house. Like that's crazy. So, um, so I think that that's really important. So even though you're not sure whether or not your bonus checks are gonna be huge, that's okay. Because even if it's $200, you know what I mean, a month that's going in there, that's still $2,400. So then over the course of three or four years, you're looking at 10 grand. You know, that'll, that'll buy you some shit. Like that'll help towards a house down payment. So I think that it's important that you don't live on your bonus check money. I would also say that um, if you are doing online sales too and you don't need that money either, particularly, like if you're in a position like me where usually what I do is I collect the orders from people, every now and again I get orders on my website, so my web orders also go into my savings account. The other thing that I would suggest to doing <clears throat> is that I would, um, if you have, if you're using Square, is get the Square debit card. One of the mistakes that women make is that you take all this money, it instantly deposits into your account, which by the way, costs you more money, um, or that instant transfer costs you an additional 1%. Um, it goes into your account, you didn't realize that a bill came out, you went, you got gas, and you got McDonald's for your kids, you had $200 profit from your party, you go to check your account, <laughs> and you don't have enough money to pay for your products or your profit is completely gone, but it never felt like you even earned it. This was something that I struggled with in the beginning of my business when we were broke as fuck um, because my accounts were always negative. And so if something would go into that account, that money just disappeared. Like I never earned that. I didn't get to do anything. So it didn't actually feel like I was earning or making money. That is a huge feel bad when you guys are going out there, you're working your tails off and it doesn't even feel like there was a reason or a reward for doing that. So what I would do is turn off your instant deposits and get the square debit card because the square, if you have the square debit card, all of your square money is available on that debit card instantly. So if you did need it for an oh shit emergency, it would be there. You can also use that debit card to order the products. My suggestion to you is that you know, like let's say you know that the products are gonna cost you 60%, right? Plus some shipping. I would, transfer, fifth, no, let's say 20% to yourself. So if you had a $600 party before the hostess, I would transfer yourself $120 and be like, hell yeah, I just made 120 bucks. Because the sooner you can get into the habit of that, the better. Like you just paid yourself and then here's the deal. The rest you're going to use to buy your products, but obviously you're going to have some left over in your square account. That's for some inventory. That's for extras. That is your world conference savings account. That is your national, like that becomes your business savings account because your partner can't see it partner. And I'm not saying keep it hidden from your partner, but they don't have access. That's your business money. Okay. Um, so I think that, and I mean, obviously you can tweak that mentally, the worst thing that you can do to yourself. And I still do this to myself and I hate it <laughs> is I go, I do a $2,000 party and I'm like, 
fuck yeah, I just made a thousand dollars. Is that true? No, right? Um, number one, the hostess was in there. <laughs> so she just got $200 in free stuff. So I am not getting paid on that and it might cost me money. Um, yes, I am at a 50% buying discount, but I'm going to have to ship some products and shipping is going to cost me. Um, so it really depends on how many people were there. Um, I also give a lot of my big parties, you guys. It's funny when my retail sales go up, my profit margin goes down, which is fine with me because I'm actually still making more money. But because I sell more of the packages, more women get discounts. So I'm still making more because my retail is higher, but like, so it's worth it to me, but I actually average you guys, maybe 38% profit at my parties. Okay. Um, now would I rather have 38% of two grand or three grand than 42% of one? Yep. <laughs> so again, worth it, but don't mentally come home from a thousand dollar party and think that you made 400 bucks because it really hurts then when you see $287 in your account. Cause your brain, it's funny. Your brain was like, Oh my gosh, I almost made $500 when you were telling yourself you made 400. And then when you see on 287, you're like, I only made $200. <laughs> so in your brain, there's almost like a $200 difference, even though that's not the reality, that is the psychology. It is depressing. It is so depressing. But if I went, hell yeah, I just made like 250 bucks. And then you go into your account and you're like, just kidding. I made 290. <laughs> All of a sudden you're celebrating what you would have felt bad about. So just make sure that you are honest with yourself mentally about what you're earning. And I always do that math before the hostess. So like when I'm calculating her retail for her hostess credits and she had a thousand dollar party, then I'm thinking to myself, sweet, I made 300 bucks. If I make money on the hostess, bonus. If I make money because of a sale, bonus. So I want income to be a bonus, not a feel bad. Because since when did making $100 in three hours not be good? <laughs> like since when was that not awesome? So it is really important that you mentally make your relationship with the money that you earn in this business healthy, okay? So when you're doing the square, de square debit card, you're going to use that because you can instantly use that to place your orders. So you can use that to place your orders. Then, like I said, you're going to transfer. You can do that first too. If you're a little bit nervous about it, place your order first, then you know what you should have left over from that party. So let's say you had after ordering it $189 left over, then you can choose how much you transfer into your personal account versus leave in your business account. But I would leave yourself some money in that square account. Like I said, whether it be for national training, world conference, emergency funds. Also, just as a general financial health thing, y'all need retirement accounts. Okay. If you do not have retirement accounts, nobody ever spoke to me about that. Even if you're putting 50 bucks a month in there away, I don't care. You need to start a retirement account, but you also need to have an emergency savings fund. Okay. And I think again, given the situation, um, it's one more example of why that's important. I'm lucky. I was able to go to Costco and fucking Costco. Like that's, I did not get toilet paper. I did not get paper towels. I didn't get half of it. It was $400. Mike almost crapped his pants because he doesn't usually come to Costco with me. And he's like, Poor. and then we had to go to Fred Meyers. Like I, cause I'm allergic to everything. You guys, I got specialty foods, dropped another $250 in Fred Meyers. It was $650 for what I would consider slightly above average grocery shopping. <laughs> like, because I obviously wanted to buy some stuff in bulk, but I wasn't prepping by any means. I wasn't buying a shit ton of extra by any standard. That is a lot of freaking money a lot of money. So you guys need to have a savings account, whether it is for, um, you know, your car going south, new tires, whatever it is. Um, here's the really cool thing is that when you are used to living with less, you can make do with less. So you're actually in a really good position to start this. 
It's the people that are used to making big income and spending big income that all of a sudden have a really hard time not living on it. So that's why I like to share this with people. I'm like, when you are not making 10 grand a month, that is the time to continue to make do because you do make do right now. You can and you will. You can keep doing it. You just have to make it a priority. The beautiful thing too, I'm not telling you to put it in stocks. I'm not telling you to stash it in the bank, right? This is still money that you have access to. But then also anytime that you go to use that, um, you want to make sure that you're asking yourself, could I potentially cover this emergency through any other funding needs? And if you can, don't touch your emergency fund. Okay. Cause you want to have at least, at least three months of your expenses and your bills. That's the goal for your savings account. Okay. It's three months. And then if you can build it from there, awesome. But the ideal goal is three months. Um, okay, uh, next piece um, of money, 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 money. Um, make sure for the love of God that you guys are buying smart from the corporate office and you are shipping smart. Do not order if there is not a sale day. Do not order if you do not have to. Do not order if you are only doing one or two products. Um, shipping. You guys should be using PayPal shipping or some sort of service that gives you a discount. PayPal shipping is about a dollar and something cents cheaper for priority flat rate. So if you ship 40 flat rate mailers, that's $40. Do not use flat rate boxes. And I say this over and over, and then there's always people that somehow still do it. Do not use flat rate boxes. Unless you are shipping from Oregon to Rhode Island and it is more than 10 pounds, it will be cheaper in a regular box. It still has to go priority mail, you guys, but it is based on weight. So if you put in that something is like, I don't know, three pounds and it's going to a county over, it's gonna cost you maybe $8, okay? So, if you like, and Ashley, Joe, and I just covered this, and we, I think we calculated that she was losing $230 a month in shipping. Like in that she didn't have to be. That wasn't her cost. That was her fuck ups. Bless. <laughs> um, that's a party or two for some people in income that she didn't have to be wasting. So in PayPal, what I would encourage you to do is play with it a little bit. Go in there and do a package like to yourself or to, you know, your mom or to somebody and then put in like flat rate box, see how much it is. And then put in priority, you know, package, put in a weight, put in a dimension and see what the total is and just play with it. And then you'll also learn, like I know now I always put it in a regular box. And then if I know that they live in like Arizona or something, I check it. And if it's over $13, then it's going to go flat rate. Like I had one that went to Rhode Island. It was 11 pounds. It was going to be like $31. So I was like, what? No, just kidding. That's going in a flat, that's going in a flat rate box. Like that's going in a medium one. <laughs> and so when I printed her label, I just printed a medium flat rate. When I went to the post office, I found the box. I stuck her other box in it and I called it a day. Like, just, you know, it does not have to be um, super hard. So just be really cognizant of your shipping costs. Um, and then be cognizant of your other costs, right? Because if you guys, you want to buy things in bulk when it's possible. Um, and that's why I think it's important to be taking that extra money. I would be setting aside $10 per party. Okay. $10 per party for actual supplies, bubble mailers, folders, whatever. That will actually be too much. I just think that it's a smart way to do it. Um, that can be on your square in your like little hidden square account, or you can pull it from the cash. Um, because buying in bulk is significantly cheaper and buying online is significantly cheaper. Like if you go to Walmart for Avery labels, you're spending $20 or $14 for a pack of 10. You can buy ProLine is the brand that I use or Pro Office, Pro Office. Um, on Amazon, I can buy like 10,000 labels for $45. So yes, it is more upfront, upfront money, but instead of a dollar a label, I'm paying a penny a label. So if you're new to, I know that we've got some newer gals, 
just set that money aside for right now. And then when you have the money saved up, then you can do the order. I'm not saying that you have to invest a shit ton of money right now to buy in bulk, do some parties, get it done, but just know that you will want to buy things in bulk because it is cheaper. Also, you guys could all be connecting. Like, hey guys, I need some bubble mailers. I was thinking about placing an order for 250. Does anyone want to go in on halves? Or I need some half sheet labels. I was looking at a box. There's freaking 10. Like I just bought one. It's the big half sheet labels, but it was two boxes. Go halves. You get one box, she gets one box. You guys split the shipping, you guys split the cost. So there's no reason why you guys couldn't do that at rally or at meetings is a good place to organize it. That's where you guys can drop it off. So do it that way. Um, now this is looking sad and empty, but the other thing that I do is, um, it's called my cash box. Um, so <laughs> you guys, please don't rob my house. <laughs> um, so my cash box actually sits in my office. Um, whenever I get cash at a party, it goes in here. This is another backup savings account and I'm too lazy to go to the bank. So I figure screw it. Why not? I put all of my cash in here now, but when I started, it was ones, fives and tens. So if I got one, what? I got one, five and tens. My husband's judging me for showing the cash box. I'm not like on Facebook live. When I do the cash box, I started ones, fives, and tens. So now though, I put anything in here, okay? This is a massive savings account because cash really adds up and cash has a way of just randomly disappearing. I also make note on the thing of how much I actually like deposit into my cash box because then if I'm bad and I go in there and I'm spending all the time, I can add all of those up and be like, oh, wow, Lucy, you would have had $1,300 in there instead of 200 if you weren't sticking your hand in the cookie jar all of the time. So um yeah it's mostly all ones and stuff and all that fun but i feel like yeah it's just another backup it's just another way of psychologically kind of saving um you don't have to go to the bank it's easy it's simple you know if you've got you know a 50 dollar bill and then you've got some ones and fives you need that 50 dollar bill take the 50 dollar bill pay yourself but the rest goes into the cash box so um i need to stop because i need to let you guys get off of here um but was that helpful okay Cool, cool, cool. Okay, guys. Well, then, um, any any questions before I wrap it up? Okay. All right, guys. Um, well, then, I hope that you all go and have an amazingly awesome, badass day. Um, go get some parties. Go get some virtual parties, and let's rock this out because the team is still killing it this month. We're still doing really, really good. I think that that's the thing, you guys. We are on track for um, a $1.25 million team. If the coronavirus fucks this up, I'm gonna be so sad. <laughs> like it is something every single year. And so I wanna make sure, like, so just to put this into perspective, the first like 10 days in March, we were at $27,000 in sales. Um, you know, so we, we killed it that first 10 days. Now we're to the 15th. We're at $35,000 in sales, which is still awesome. But I'm like, okay guys, like it's halfway through the month here. So it's time to really step it up. So this does not have to also derail any of your big goals. Cause I know we've got girls shooting for president's club. I know we've got girls shooting for board. I know we've got gals shooting for rookie of the year. I know we've got gals that have those sales goals for themselves. So that I think is where it's really important that we do just pivot and we stay the course you're just strategizing a little bit differently. So go out there and book as many of these online parties as you possibly can, um, you know, for, for the end of the month. But even, like I said, you guys could do it for this week. If you were like, screw it, I'm just going to like test one out and just see how it goes before there's even a script there. You guys are all smart. You're all more than capable of doing your party and you're more than capable of posting on Facebook. Like you guys do not have to wait for a script. Um, and some of you guys have really badass ideas too. So if you come up with something that's really fun, I would love for you to share it. Cause I think that right now that's going to be super helpful. So stay the course, you guys rock it out, stay on track for your big goals. Cause it's totally doable. Cause I think that we can continue um, to be super strong through this. So love you guys. And I will chat with you all soon.